Hey everybody, it's Russ Miller. I'm here at Drumeo, and we have a, a really, really cool course here called Triple Your Hand Speed in One Day. And uh, you'll see what I mean by that here in just a moment. The, the main focus of this thing is to change the way you're thinking about striking this instrument, okay? And <clears throat> let me get right into it. Um, most of the time when you start playing the drums or, or anybody that picks up the stick for the first time and they, they go to hit the instrument, they basically make one note with one movement towards the instrument, right? So they do that. The problem with this is the human body can only go so fast. Um, it, it can't go af over a certain rate uh, you have to utilize mechanics inside of the stroke of the drum uh, to execute not only a higher amount of notes, but also uh, dynamics and articulation inside of what we're playing. And what that means is everything can't be the same volume because that's not very listenable. It would be like me talking to you like this for the entire rest of the lesson. You know, that's not the way we talk to people. And this is communicating. So everything that you do with your voice is sort of the same thing that you need to do from an instrument. So what I hear the most from young drummers uh, and some older drummers too is that they sort of hit the ceiling physically. Um, and then also that they sound the same for a very long period of time. Like they don't sort of advance sonically from what's coming from the drum. So this will fix both of those things. And what it's gonna do is it's going to allow you to, whatever you could play today, if you're not utilizing this approach and technique, whatever you can play today, you'll have three times the facility or movement level tomorrow. And um, I think it's, uh, it's gonna be a big uh, eye-opener for some of you guys. It's gonna be um, difficult in some ways. In, in the other ways, it's gonna open up a whole world. Okay, so here we go. First things first. When you strike the drum, the, what you don't wanna do is not utilize the movement of the elbow, okay? In an upward direction, but only utilize the movement of the elbow in a vertical direction this way. So this kind of thing. This is actually a kind of stroke, and there's nothing wrong with it. But it's it used for a very specific thing. What we don't want to have happen is for you to use that for every stroke that you play, because you end up sort of looking like this. There's a lot of movement involved, and Dynamically, it's very difficult to get small and big notes out of a full vertical stroke like that. You have to limit the stick height on the, on the drum, like by maybe going toward the instrument and then limiting how far it comes off or playing fully into it. That's very difficult. What we wanna do is be able to change and control the stick height after the rebound of the drum. So, Basically, it's based on the molar technique in a combination with something that I, I studied with Jim Chapin, who was the um, student of Sanford Moeller, the namesake of the molar technique. And in combination with what Jim showed me and another teacher of mine, Freddie Gruber, you know, we sort of came up with this approach. Um, it's basically a molar technique. If you don't know what that is, it's based around creating multiple notes with one movement. So what I mean is, as I go to the drum, there's notes, that's the first note, which is an addressing note, meaning the first note going to the drum. Now I have the opportunity to play notes within the rebound of that. And then also, as the stick is moving upward, the ability to play note, notes in the upward movement. So what happens there is, as I, You can see in its most basic form there where I'm playing one additional tap and an upward note, I'm playing three notes with one movement towards the instrument, okay? So instead of playing one note, 
I'm playing three. As I move towards the instrument one time, three notes can happen. So there's three kinds of notes, a downward note, which is like anybody would play. My daughter would pick up a stick and do that. You allow the stick to rebound slightly. When you do that, you limit the height of that note slightly. Allow it to rebound, but you limit by a slight pull up with your fingers. You can see what happens to the stick tip is it pushes downward and controls the stick height. This gives me the opportunity to play finger notes like this or taps. I can play as many of those taps as I want. You can play one, two, three, four, five, whatever. But on the very last tap, the elbow moves up and out of the stroke and then comes in position to play it again. So the very first thing to move is the elbow out like this with a whipping motion like this. This is the molar technique with a whipping motion. Down, limit the rebound. Don't, don't stop the movement, but limit the stick height and the rebound. Now I can play multiple taps. The last one, up, elbows in, ready to strike again. It's all a part of this elbow movement. So where I was playing one note before, now I'm playing three or more. So the speed that you could play one note before, utilizing this technique, you will now be able to play three notes after you get the feel of this. So that's what we mean by tripling your hand speed. So down. You see, out, in, out, in, elbow's the first to move. It's a whipping motion. And you remember what, what happens with a whip. The inertia of the tip is built up like a whip, like you think of you know Indiana Jones whip like this. If I hit you with a whip right here, it doesn't hurt. But if you're way over there and you get the inertia from the tip, it hurts a lot, right? That's where all the power comes from. And so what else happens with this stroke is that you, you are, you're able to play much, much louder with a lower stick height to the drum, right? Because the other way for you to play louder, you have to raise the stick height. Well, the problem with this is this takes time to go from here to here. So it, it slows down the speed at which you can execute things on the drums. When you're playing like this, you don't have the facility to move quickly because it just flat out takes time to get here. I wanna be able to play loud. That's plenty loud, but keeping the stick height at you know 10 to 12 inches above the drum. I mean, remember, humans invented microphones. We can just turn them up. You don't have to beat the drums to death, okay? I mean, you wanna present yourself and support the band, but after a certain point, you're sort of just beating your head against the wall because unless we turn the mic up, it's not gonna get any louder. So keep that stick height reasonable. Elbow first, out. Open stroke, remember the positioning here, there's tons of videos on Drumio about technique. You know, this is the position here, you got thumb and index finger. Okay, I limit it, play my tap, down, tap. Last one, tap up like this in a, in a snaking motion with the elbow and back down again. So, down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up. I can add taps. Down, tap, tap, up, tap, tap, up, tap, tap, up, tap, tap, up. Jim Chapin used to tell me the up was like putting your finger on a hot burner. You know, it was just like up, like that, like it was very, very hot and getting out of the way. Same thing with the left hand. When you're playing traditional grip, the, the hand sort of when you strike the drum, the thumb is towards the sky. As the elbow goes out, the hand sort of turns over to the palm towards the ground, and then back to thumb towards the sky at the top again. If you're playing matched, that's the same here. You'll notice that it's palm towards the ground. When you turn your hand like this, you change the technique to a finger technique, thumb towards the sky. Now you're using this motion again, and it's more difficult to get multiple notes out of that movement. When you have your hand with the palm down, you can utilize the fingers in that pulling motion and get more 
action out of that one stroke. Okay, but here's the left hand, hand traditional, elbow first, palm turning. This does not require a lot of physicality. If I tried to play just that with single notes towards the drum, it would look like this. I can't do it. It's not possible. Your body can't do it. Now remember, we're going to combine this. We're going to combine this where we interplay the hands. We'll talk about in a second. But first, let's just get this. Let's get our exercise to work on this quickly. We put a, a metronome on subdividing triplets down at about 60 BPM. Really slow. Down tap, up, down tap, up, down tap, up, down tap, up. Very simple. You can see the look of it. You sort of see this snaking look. If you don't look like that, I always practice this stuff in the mirror. If you don't look like that when you play, if you don't start to see these kind of things when you're playing, and you're seeing these jagged movements, then you're forcing one note, one movement. We want to see this sort of motion like this as you move around the drums. It should look very comfortable and very easy to play. Okay? Now here's the exercise. It's very simple. It's three, six, nine, twelve with each hand. So you're going to do three, down tap up, down tap up with the next hand, then six, down tap up, down tap up with the same hand, same hand, then nine, then 12, it looks like this. One, two, three, four. Three, three, six, six, nine, nine, twelve, twelve. Okay? Now here's where we're really gonna kick in to a high speed is when we start to interplay this technique, okay? And what I mean by interplay is we're gonna go back and forth with the same stroke. So it'll be down right, down left, tap right, tap left, up right, up left. One of the great things about this is the natural dynamic that happens in this technique. That down note has a nice accent and the other ones are sort of ghosted and smaller. So it starts to make you have that sort of natural arc in your playing dynamically. Now, we're gonna interplay these in two ways. This first way that I just showed you has the molar in both hands. So you're gonna end up with the accent on the first two notes. Down, 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 down up, up, and it sounds like this. Okay, Buddy used to call that stirring the soup when he would play that kind of, Buddy Rich would play that kind of thing. You would see his hands going like this with the double accents and there's a lot of videos with those guys playing. You can see him doing that. But that was a double molar technique interplayed. And um, that has an accent on both downbeat notes. Now, what if you don't want an accent on both downbeat notes? What you do is move the molar to one hand and a finger control technique in the other hand unaccented. Because remember what I said about the finger control, it's really hard to accent that way. But it is great to play lightly and quickly with. So I'm just going to use the fingers. If I was playing match, I would just be using these fingers here like that. But traditional, I use the ones on top of the stick like this. So I'm going to put molar in the right hand, down, and then finger only on the left, tap with the right, finger only on the left, up with the right, finger only on the left. 
finger, tap, finger, up, finger, down, finger, tap, finger, up, finger. Now you can see there's an accent only on the front note. These are groups of sixes. You can add a tap and a finger to that to make them groups of eights, like 32nd notes or 16th notes. But check this out. Even when I'm playing this, That's what I'm doing with my right hand. That's not really that fast. I can go a lot faster, you know. I can actually go so fast with my right hand with this technique that it's bordering on impossible to get the left hand notes in there at that tempo. Even if you get to 135 or 140 with those, that molar technique, you've pretty much gotten to a point where you won't ever need to play faster than that. Because um, this is pretty quick. and I'm only doing this. Not sure how much faster you're ever gonna need to play than that. So uh, this technique will get you to that point very quickly. So enter played molar, down, down, tap, tap, up, up or finger molar combination, down finger, tap finger, up finger, down finger, tap finger, up finger. Go back and forth with each hand, move them around the kit, you'll start to see this facility open up and if you weren't doing this before, if you were playing one note for one stroke, you will now have the ability to play three times more plus than what you could before. And I just highly, highly recommend that you guys work on this. It's gonna not only get you more speed, it's gonna get that natural dynamic in there, and it's just gonna lighten up your whole load playing this instrument. You're gonna be able to move so much quicker, so much easier, and it's gonna sound better. You know, when you play into the instrument a lot with those single strokes, it doesn't sound as good as when you have these small and big notes around the instruments and getting, pulling the sound out of them. So, I highly recommend you work on this, the 36912, mark it down each day. Today we start at 60, do, right hand, left hand, so just write it down, one BPM a day, just work on our 36912, interplay the molar, interplay the molar finger, and you guys will be blazing in no time, okay? So thanks for joining me for Triple Your Hand Speed. We have another lesson on how to apply the molar technique to the feet and triple your foot speed as well. So join me in that course. We'll see you guys there.